Hey friends, how are you all? Today is going to be a very interesting discussion why the agile software development methodology is better than waterfall model. I will be using a few practical examples. Let's get straight into it. Let's, let me just share the screen. Okay, very good. So as usual, this is, uh, I will explain the entire thing in three simple steps without taking much time. So this will be very beneficial for people who are new to Agile, people who are doing the interview attendees, want to learn through practical explanation, quick learners who don't have too much time, new and experienced IT professionals, people who have been working in Waterfall, they want to see why is Agile better. Let's get straight into the first slide here. So if we have to compare the two, right, we have to talk about Waterfall methodology. What is Waterfall? Waterfall was the initial approach for software development as well as for other um, projects, for example, for construction projects, uh, compliance projects, for a lot of even like um, house construction, they used to use the waterfall methodology. So what is waterfall methodology, right? In waterfall methodology, we start from the requirements. And let's talk about constructing a house, right? So when we are constructing a house, we have all the requirements like we know how many bedrooms we want, how many washrooms we want, how many floors we want, parking, everything we know already. So the requirements are clear, right? Whereas when it comes to software, initially before 2000, uh, that is in the 1990s, 1980s and all that, the requirements were not so complex because all the systems were standalone systems. Those systems are called monolithic applications. So once we have all the requirements, then we get into the design phase. Entire design will be done. Then get, we get into implementation. That is, we actually develop the application or the house or whatever using the design, right? Now we get into testing phase. And after that installation or implementation, that is actually, it is installed in, on site where people can use it. Let's say if it's a banking software, it's installed in the bank, people start using it, right? And the final one is the maintenance. So this is the traditional old way of developing software that's called the waterfall methodology so let's just quickly go into these points we already discussed it waterfall projects that requirements are clear projects that requirements are clear functional and non-functional requirements should be very clear second one is it is plan driven because there is already a plan from the beginning till the end it's plan driven that's what waterfall is all about. Applications developed in waterfall is called monolithic applications. I already discussed about it. Uh, really huge banking insurance applications that was complete, uh, completed and shipped as one whole application. So initially, before in 2000 and before that, entire banking application, they used to try and develop the entire thing and then give it to the user. Right, that was the approach. Now the uh, fifth point here is construction projects, compliance projects are good candidates for waterfall methodology. And in waterfall methodology, we have PM taking the lead. PM is the one who is taking the lead. He or she will be responsible for the success or the failure of the project. So now let's get to the next slide. Now here we are talking about what changed in early 2000s. In early 2000s, like in 2001, 2002, requirements became more complex. What does that mean? Because more people were using the application and applications were, let's take an example of banking application, right? In um, 2000s, let's say someone goes to the bank to do a transaction. So the teller at, teller at the counter will take the cash, deposit it into customer's account, and then give them a receipt, right? Pretty much that was the only trans that that was the only interaction in the bank. But whereas after 2000s, uh, online banking started extensively, cash advance started um, wiring, a lot of new and innovative ways of banking started uh, coming into the market and exposure to the number of people were very huge. That is why the requirements became more and more complex. Now, there was no concept of monolithic application. There's multiple applications talking to each other.
as a result, the requirements became co complex, right? This changed in the early 2000s. Number of users increased exponentially. What is the third one? Requirement changing faster than before due to demand. As more people are using it, the demand increased. The load on the system increased. Number of users increased, the load on the system increased, right? Third one, downtime. Fourth one is downtime became more critical as the application had a lot of... Because let's say initially when only few people were using the software as in a monolithic application, even if the system was down for a day or two, not many people are going to be impacted because the number of users are less. But as more and more people started using the application, the downtime became very critical because let's say lakhs and lakhs of people are calling the bank. Like I'm just taking an example of the bank, right? Asking them, your system is down, what's happening, right? So they had to resolve it very quickly. And here, the uh, this one, next one is changes had to be delivered quickly. Changes, what all the software changes are being uh, are happening in an application had to be delivered quickly. The reason is because whenever they are in, implementing a change, it is enhancing the system or it is resolving a bug. In that case, the change had to be delivered very quickly. And also the feedback from stakeholders or the users increased because as more people are using, the feedback increased, right? Rapid deployment was necessary. So all these things changed in early 2000s. So because of all this, a demand for a new methodology for software development had to be implemented. In Agile methodology, we have this concept of iterations. See here, the iterations. What is iteration? Iteration is the entire life cycle that is starting from planning to design to development, testing, deploy, review, and release, release into production, right? entire thing the cycle will happen in a very in a span of few weeks so it a few weeks so along with agile came the concept of iteration iteration along with agile methodology came the concept of iterations in in an iteration Everything starting from planning to design to development, testing, deploy, and review and release. Everything happens within a short span of one week or two weeks. Or it can be three weeks or four weeks, depending on software. But the priority was given to smaller iterations. Now, with Agile, um, highest priority is to satisfy the customer through early and continuous delivery of valuable software within weeks, which is called iterations. Let's go back to this point again. Early and continuous delivery of valuable software. Second one is welcome changes. What does that mean? Let's say two banks are competing with each other and whoever is implementing the changes faster, they became successful compared to the other. That is why I, I, Agile had welcome changes. Third one is business people and developers work together. What does that mean? Like business people who are all the the business users who are all uh, who who have the actual knowledge about the business, as well as the software developers, the testers. Everybody started working together in a collaborative environment, so that the output will be better product. So this was given priority. Business people and developers work together, okay? Face-to-face -face communication is promoted because what is the most effective way of communication? It's face-to-face -face communication. So let's say we have an issue and we are meeting in a meeting room face-to-face -face and we are ironing out the differences. Everybody can right away go back to their table and start developing. Next one is working software is the primary measure of success. The only measure or the working software, the, so, the working software is a primary measure of success. In Agile, the num the team is very small, like uh, ten to twelve people. The reason is because when this the team is smaller, then self organizations become more efficient. Interaction becomes more efficient. So that's why Agile is self organized, smaller teams. Whereas in Waterfall, the teams were very huge. Sometimes there could be 50 people working in a single uh, product or even more.
So next one is continuous at attention to improvement. Continuous attention to improvement. Technical challenges, design. If there is a, a challenge in technical things or in design things, there is continuous attention to improvement was part of agile methodology. Uh, next one is self-organized teams. What does this mean? Self-organized means they are not organized by a project manager. Unlike in Waterfall, project manager takes care of all the um, all project manager take care of organizing the teams, convincing them, making them work and all that. Whereas in Agile, it is a self-organized teams, which means that everybody takes responsibility for his or her work. Uh, that's why it's called self-organized teams. The last one we have here is simplicity. Art of minimizing the amount of work not done. So there was always a focus on what can be excluded because in Agile, we don't want to be in a situation where we are, we are working on a wrong product or we are going in a wrong direction. The reason is because there is quick feedback, right? So as we get very quick feedback, uh, we know the direction we are heading. So in that case, we can minimize the amount of work not done. Whatever is not needed, whatever is not a must, we can always remove it. We don't need to work on it. Making the software more simple. Uh, okay, we are in the final slide now. I will continue to make more simplified and easier to learn quick videos. And also, I want to request that if this was helpful, please subscribe because when you subscribe, it gives me the motivation to create new, useful videos. Um, so I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. I talk to you later. Bye now.